He's one of the world's most gifted bowlers, which makes it hard to believe that Anthony Simonson has never won a singles title here at the Guaranteed Rate World Series of Bowling. Tonight, the five-time major champion is back on the lanes, hoping for a victory in the PBA Shark Championship. Next on FS1. Right, PBA Tour World Series of Bowling from Bolero Wawatosa outside Milwaukee. It's the third of three pattern championships. The Shark. Here are the top five seats tonight after 20 games of qualifying of this challenging 48 foot oil pattern. Two hander Matt Ogle, the top seed, followed by Packy Hanrahan, winner of tour this year for the first time in his career. Anthony Simonson, busy in this year's World Series. Santu Tahaba nine and appears in back to back shows. And the fifth seed is Australia's Sam Cooley. Welcome back to suburban Milwaukee Bowling fans. Great to have with us. <laughs> As always, we're cheering for Randy Pearson, my partner, the Hall of Famer. I'm Dave Ryan, joined by Kimberly Presser in a moment. Randy, I'm detecting well, I a theme here. I, we love Great. this town. Detecting a theme. Four of the five bowlers are two-handers, including Anthony Simonson. Why are they so good on this pattern? Because it's an extremely long pattern, and you have to play the deep inside part of the lane. And in order to be successful, you got to have a lot of power. And who better to do that than the two-handed styles like Anthony Simonson? Deep inside line, it's kind of a uh, kind of a hook stop or a fallback shot to the 1-3 pocket or the 1-2 pocket for Packy Hanrahan. But in order to get the corner pins out, you need that power. Simonson, Masters champ this year outside Detroit. His fifth career major goes for another title here tonight. We talk about Matt Ogle now, the top seed. He's a two-hander with a lot of power. First full year for Matt on tour this year. Has he arrived? Absolutely, and, and he's gone through the natural progressions that we all do out on the PBA Tour. First, you start with cashing, right? Learn how to get a check. And then you graduate to making match play. And then finally, you make a TV show, and then you learn how to win on television. He's got a win. It's a doubles win with Sean Rash. And tonight, he's one game away from capturing his first ever singles title. Tomorrow match play starts for the top 12 qualifiers for the world championship. Three of the top five qualifiers on the show tonight. And also Matt Ogle in the eighth position as of this evening. Kimberly Pressler now joined by Santu Tahabanai and back on TV looking for a better result tonight. Thanks, Dave. So, Santu, you made your PBA debut right here last year at the World Series of Bowling. This year, you're the Rookie of the Year. You made back-to-back -back shows. You have a chance at making a third by the end of the week. Why so successful? So close. I gotta say, I don't even know. I feel like the success has been like building my confidence. So it's like the biggest key for the success. Now I have to ask the question that everyone's wondering here. Love the hair, but are you trying to go after the cool hair crown that Kyle Troop holds? I would never do that. I have my, <laughs> I have my own style even though it resembles that, but I would never try to take a crown from him. Good luck to you today. Thank you. Hey, hey, Dave, I don't, I don't see any resemblance. He's got his own do going on. He looks great. Here is the step ladder tonight, the all-international matchup. Cooley against Tabanainen. The winner takes on the spectacular Anthony Simonson. Appearing at back-to-back -back shows, Packy Hanrahan looks for his second win of the year in the top seed, Matt Ogle. One win from his second career crown, first, as Randy pointed out, in singles. Here we go to Tabanainen and Cooley. Truly a World Series of bowling. Last of the Scorpion, Santu appeared with Jesper Svensson from Sweden. <laughs> Sam Cooley gets us started with a strike. Speaking of haircuts, Santu told us in interviews this week that if he wins Sunday, noon Eastern on Fox World Championship, mm -hmm. he'll get his haircut. He has not cut it since he got to the States. Start of the season in January for the USO. Why would you do that? <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Santu! All right. Beauty there. Great shot. I got Pete. Here are the odds to win provided by Fox Bet for entertainment purposes only. 
Well, let's check it out. What do you think of the odds, RP? Well, I, I think that uh, anytime you can, you want to go with the number one seed because there's only one game that that player has to win. Santu. Ooh, that's high. Three, six, ten. Yeah, it looked a little left out of his hand, and sure enough, three, six, ten. Let's check out Santu's follow through. It's kind of a hybrid of. It's kind of a hybrid of Stu Williams and Sam Cooley. So real short going through and then going left. All international players. It, it's very unique. We called Sam Cooley's first career win is he? As this arsenal tonight in the lanes here in Wauwatosa. That was the 2021 World Series bowling. Cooley going with exotic gem on this right lane. Good looking shot. Right lane for Sam Cooley. Let's take a look at tonight's Brunswick oil pattern. Tonight here, it's the Shark, Randy. 48 feet in length. Remember at the World Series of Bowling, we typically go short, medium, long. Cheetah being the shortest, we used that on Monday night. And now we're at the longest pattern, 48 feet shark. You can see the players playing the middle part of the lane. Scary part is there is one southpaw on tonight's telecast, and that's Packy. Cheetah, Monday, 35 feet. Scorpion last night, 42, 48 tonight. Cooley looking for help, does not get it on the 10 pin. Second career title came this year in Springfield, Missouri. Remember we talked about power, Dave. You see the six pin going to the sidewall kind of sideways instead of off the sidewall and driving into the 10. And that's just power. You got to have that extra kick to get the corners out. Tempin got that. He knocked off Chris Prather in 2021 in Tampa. In the championship match of the Cheetah that year, 247-185 to win his first crown. Up, oh, we've got a wardrobe a malfunction. Back. All right, it's a microphone, but we'll get that fixed quickly. Had a great meeting with Santu yesterday and today. I thought he seemed more relaxed tonight before his second ever career PBA Tour singles show. Get that first one out of the way, right? The nerves have got to be tough last night. I mean, this guy always seems chill <laughs> every time we talk to him, doesn't he? I mean, he always seems like he's just so chill. He's going with blue coral venom. Satu. No. Don't. Okay. Don't think just about it. The seven and not the dreaded seven ten split. Almost at it. Well, you know what they say about almost. It only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. And lucky for that 10 pin, it fell late. I'd hate to see what would have happened if it stood up. Santu's a big boy. Big and strong. Of course, 7 10 only made four times on TV last time, Anthony Nyer in 2021 at the U.S. Open in Reno. That did not count as a re-rack, by the way, for Sansa. We're going to give him his two re-racks. That was a microphone issue. Sam Cooley keeps a journal, he told us about pre-show. Tracking shots. There you go. Just 10 pin. We'll hear more about that from Kimberly in a moment. You see that kick there? That's what, that's what power does for you. Gets that six to react. Coming off the wall, hitting the 10. Watch. Second pin to your right. There we go. Much different approach for Santu. It's a much longer lane pattern. We saw lots of loft last night on the Scorpion, not doing that tonight further in. Back to Sam, right lane. Perfect. Back to Kimberly Moore on that journal he keeps. 
Yeah, you guys noticed that he was writing in a composition notebook while he was waiting to bowl. And he told us that he started during that process during the Masters since phones weren't allowed. He said he'd go pair to pair, write down lane conditions, how he bowled, what he saw, or even his emotions at the time. And he told us that the process helped him so much mentally that he's continued to do that. Now, one thing that you'll see written throughout it is wait on it. And Sam tells me that that's his mental trigger to not get ahead of himself. KP, thanks for that. Reminders to stay focused to help with shots like that. I personally like the old school journal idea. Everything done digitally now. That missed quite a bit left and still held its line to the pocket. You know, back in the day, Dave, guys used to put tape on their shoes and write a little message on the tape. You know, like slow down, short. Shorter first, that kind of stuff. Did you keep a journal at any point? No. To mm -hmm. yeah. and it comes to 10. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. These guys are cooking now. You know, a lot has to do with how the players broke this pair down on the right side. If they get on top of each other and play the same zone in practice, they can create something really nice for them. If they get too deep too early, could get ugly. Right now, it looks pretty good. Sub two for the tie. Got it! Tattoos the one through pocket. 60 feet to success for Santu. It's an all-world matchup here in game number one. More to come from Wauwatosa. Stay with us. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Want to move fast? With Same Day Mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as fast as one day to get you closing on the home of your dreams in just 10 days. Learn more at rate.com. And by Bolero, the number one place to bowl, party, and play with over 325 locations nationwide. Head to bolero.com today to find a center near you. Sunday on Fox, the kings of the lanes lay everything on the line for a major title where names become legends and legends become champions. The PBA World Championship presented by Paps Blue Ribbon, Sunday noon Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Bit of a struggle, second frame, Santu had seven spare. So in between the break, he spoke with his tour rep, Brett Spangler, lighting the move. On the second frame, I admit, my nerves got me. Well, even the first frame, I was like, oh, that's got to lay there a lot. But so. it was like 350 RPM in my first frame. <laughs> but the second one was like, I released the ball even faster than Stu. I released right. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> that's so little reference to his buddy, Stu Williams. He is pretty chill and <laughs> just relaxing. That's one of the roles of the tour rep. Great job there, Brett Spangler, to loosen him up a little bit. Second ever career singles show for Santu. Here's Sam. There's a strike. Great shot. Yeah, we talk about swing direction a lot, and usually it's with EJ Tackett, but I want you to take a look right here at that swing and watch what the ball does on the way down. Go ahead and run it. See how it tucks underneath him and gets to the inside, and that helps get the hand and the elbow in the right spot right before release. That little figure eight move out to in. Left lane for Sam. Almost a 7-10, just a 7-pin stands. Pretty good miss left right there as you see the numbers on strike track. But if you're going to miss on this pattern, you want to miss in. You miss to the right, you can forget it. Just not enough friction down lane.
Perfect so far. This single pin spare conversion. Whoa, just enough. I a whisker. That was dramatic. What does the score sheet say, Dave? Spare. There you go. <laughs> Remember, it's not how, it's how many. Right. Back to you. <laughs> Reigning rookie of the year. Yeah. Right lane for Satu. Oh, ring and ten pin. Good shot. Ooh. Tough break in the seventh. Yeah, th that was a really good shot. And I, I, I mean, look, the last thing you want to do is what? Don't poke the bear, right? And that'll get it started. Really good shot working on three in a row, trying to stay even. And now he'll be 10 down with a spare. Looks down to avoid a foul, make sure his footwork is good near the foul line. You know, Santu did get his Rookie of the Year trophy this week here. Yeah, so he's bowling. Took Pretty cool. Pictures with that, yeah. He was so proud of that. Whoa, no foul. Because as he told us, it was a vote from the PBA membership. Mm -hmm. And it meant so much that others thought he deserved the award. And you get it once in a career. That's it. Rookie year. Pretty cool. Got a hook? Does. Yeah, right there. Look at those numbers there. He, he got that one a little bit farther right than I think he wanted to. And again, breaking down the old pattern properly in practice, probably aiding that ball getting back to the pocket. It's a good time to have a fresh chamois. She can get all that excess oil off because there's a lot of it out there. Except in the front part of the lane. Simonson is next. Third seed awaits the winner. Cool lead by 10, works on a spare. Eighth frame, big shot, big strike. Yeah, usually when you hit them there, they all go down. And watching the last 10 games of qualifying for Shark. I noticed a lot of players using loft early on just to get the ball to clear the front part of the lane. One of the worst things that you can have happen in this sport is to have your bowling ball hook early. It just absolutely ruins the overall ball reaction. Why do you ask? Well, if the ball hooks early, by the time it gets down to the pins, it's gonna lose energy. I love the explanation. Second career title came in Missouri this year for Sam. Another good one. That looks pretty good to me, Randy. Really good. And he talked to us pre-show about ball speed. And his lay down and being perfect on timing. He'll log that in the journal. Just inside fourth arrow. Up in the perfect spot and a great time to go strike in the eighth and ninth. Look at the max scores right there. He can't be shut out now, no matter what Santu does. Foundation frame Santu pulled it in 10, does it? Big shot for the star from Finland. Some fans up middle of the night in Finland right now. It's past 2 a.m., about 2.23. They watched last night. They're watching tonight in Europe. Santu. Oh, it's the 7-10. Got to be kidding me. Ah. It was a really good shot again. And remember, he almost left the pocket 7-10 back in the third frame. And now... This is going to send Santu to the locker room early tonight. We might see him Sunday. Qualifying starts tomorrow. 12 games, round robin match play, plus bonus pins. Top five make the show Sunday. Noon Easter on Fox. He is currently number three on that list in qualifying. It's the fourth major of the season. And thanks to that mistake, Cooley steps up. Looking to wrap it up, which he does. It's over. 
Sam Cooley will take on Simonson in the next match here tonight. Sam Cooley, winner, he'll move on. You know what, Dave, I, I feel the players have broken the lanes down in a really nice and friendly way, meaning that they have a little bit of mistake area to the right and left. And now all the players have to do on the right side is transition in. When the lanes dry up just a little bit, they'll just keep cheating it towards the center part of the lane. How does that relate to Simonson coming up? It's going to give him a really good ball reaction. That's and so only one. he gets loose early, makes some good shots. It's going to be tough to beat. Watch out. Always thinking ahead. He has beaten Tahavanainen. Wait, what did you say? Santu Tahavanainen. That, yeah, that second one. <laughs> Cooley looking for title number two in the season, but he's got to get to this guy next. Two-handed sensation, Anthony Simons, and it's next here on FS1. EJ Tack had knocked off BJ Moore, 259, 178 to win the PBA Cheetah Championship, 20th third title, fourth of the year for EJ Tack, the front runner for Player of the Year. Recapping our pattern events, that was Cheetah Monday night here on FS1. Then last night, Jacob Buttrip defeated EJ Tackett in the final. 225, 217, eighth career title, first since 2019 USBC Masters, despite the late bucket lead, but EJ Tackett couldn't take advantage. Needed a double and nine, left that 10 pin on the bench, an emotional Jacob Butch. Wins last night, 225, 217. Already, Sam Cooley here on the Shark, a win over Santu to Hava 9 in 247, 212. So Cooley, with his eight strikes in match number one, now takes on Anthony Simonson. Joined by Kimberly Preston. Thanks, Dave. So, Anthony, you know, strong showing at the World Series of Bowling. Made last night's show. Tonight, you still have a chance at the World Championship, but this is a longer pattern. I saw you taking some shots. What's your look like? Uh, probably about the same as last night. I struck the first couple frames and then it got a little tricky. So, uh, just going to make a move here to start the match and see what happens from there. What's going to be key for you to win this evening? Uh, I think ball speed, making sure uh, the tempo is at whatever the lane's calling for. Uh, we'll find that out here in the first few frames and we'll go from there. Good luck to you. Thanks. All right, KP, thanks very much. Second win of the year for Simonson at the SBC Masters at Allen Park at Thunder Bowl. Also one of the PBA Wichita Classics. So he and Tackett, two multi-tour winners. Odds to win by Fox Bet for entertainment purposes only. Simonson is the favorite. New night, new pattern. Let's see how Simo does on the shark. <sighs> Competed USA versus the world. Saturday, Sunday here in Wauwatosa. Saw him again last night. Back on TV. Strikes. Three of five strikes for Cooley. First match, left lane, five of six in the right, right lane. Against Tahava Nine in, in the opening match here. Begins his second match. All right. A really nice break going in high there, tripping the four out late, and then he gives it the look. It's the stink eye afterwards because he did not expect this ball to go high, so he gives it a long, hard look and says to himself, all right, it's time to make a move or an adjustment on that lane. And there it is, the old stink eye. Stare down. Yeah. Sam told us pre-show his two titles have been on short oil patterns. Wants to prove he can win on the long shark pattern tonight. 48 feet. Help on the seven. It goes down late. Fortunate double there. Another nice break in terms of pin action. But he did make a two-and-one move 
on the right lane. Two boards left with his feet, one with his target, and still went a little bit high, and I think maybe that's why he was staring down that right lane. Goes into the journal. It's all about adjustments now as the lanes transition. Right lane for Simo, watch it. Hey, there's some help too. He'll take a break. Simonson going with the gem on both lanes. Same shot as he threw on the left lane. Cooley going with exotic react, gem. Please. So if you had your choice, would you would you throw a gem or an exotic gem? Definitely an exotic gem. Thank you. Really? Given the choice. Why? Just because of the name? For sure. Or you like the color better? <laughs> or because it matches your if, shirt? If I were, there's the arsenal, speaking of which, were anywhere near your level, and I'm not, I would ask your advice I just do it right on here? which ball. Well, guess what? Done. They're both using I just exotic did it. I just gem. Did it right here. See? <laughs> Re-rack for Simonson. Great start here. Get this ready to go and resume our match number two tonight. Packy Hanrahan, Matt Ogle. Wait in the step ladder here for the Shark Championship. Yeah. Simonson to keep us perfect. Yeah! Shrapnel remains in the pit. What a shot. All right, now I'm being told it's a regular gem. Hard to see from up here. There were four total 300 games in the event. Ogle had one, Simo had one in the 20 games of Shark. Just putting it out there. Curley, ringing 10 pin. No, oh, doesn't get it. So Sam goes high first ball, and then switches balls on that right lane. Look at that, that uh, laid on that 10, but the machine got it. Sam went to an absolute on that right lane. Covered the 10 nicely. Sam told us tonight pre-show, getting that second win in Missouri really boosted his confidence. He was getting down, a little deflated, a little defeated. Had a good meeting with the sports psychologist, get him back on track. Didn't want to be a one-time winner. Felt he was ready to join the multi-tour titleist club, which he did. First non-strike, nine spare for Cooley. Four frame. Watch the start a new strike streak. Trying to find out if that's the same ball used on the right lane. It is. So absolute now on both lanes. There's so many bowling balls from all the manufacturers. It's kind of hard to stay ahead of that. What's he using there? That looks like a gem. Two titles this year. Big season, Simonson. Looking for help. No. No messenger for the 10 pin. Pretty good shot. Common leave, though, on this pattern. 48 feet in length again. Very slick. Outside part of the lane, just out of, it's just out of bounds. You cannot play there. Simonson, now 22 or 23 in the short competition. With the 10 pin, takes care of that. Let's flash back. PBA Rob Holman doubles, National Bowling Stadium. Reno about a young Anthony Simonson became the second youngest winner at a PBA Tour event. Team with Connor Pickford to win the Rob Holman doubles championship. 
Simonson and Pickford, if you Andres Gomez and Josh Blanchard, 223, 173. Look at Simon, so young. 18 years old, 11 months, 12 days. Hard to believe he's never won a singles title at the World Series of Bowling. With everything he's accomplished, that's shocking. Agreed. Two-handed sensational at 26 years old. Most common leave by all five players on tonight's telecast, the corner pins. Seven pins for the seven pin for Packy Hanrahan and ten pins for all the other right handers. Cooley, big shot. No ten pin there. Ties us up. In the fifth frame. Numbers for Cooley. Six frame for a 10 pin lead. Bring in 10 pin, good shot. Wait on it a little bit more. Six second to the right, up and around the 10. Despair, he'll be here. He'll be trailing by one halfway through this game two. Near perfection, this single pin spare conversion. A great stat increases for Sam Cooley of Australia. We've got a tremendous finish in match number two on the way here from Wauwatosa. Simonson bids for the title tonight. Head to head with Australia, Sam Cooley. Not a really emotional guy, occasionally. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right. Simonson up by one. Pan works on a strike, and it was sixth frame here, Randy. Great finish on the way. Yeah, let's take a look at the 3D comparison between Simonson and Cooley. Simonson looks like a little softer ball speed, so he's going to open the lane up a little bit more. You can see at the laydown, he's five left of Cooley and four at the arrows. And there's a difference in the ball speed. You can see the red ball, Simonson a little bit slower, and so it makes sense that he would be a little bit deeper. And take a look again. There's the launch. That's the laydown when the ball hits the floor and at the arrows. toward a fantastic finish here tonight in suburban Milwaukee. Third and final pattern show, the World Championship, fourth major of the year, noon Eastern on Fox Sunday. We'll wrap up the World Series. Simonson to go up by 11. Does just that. Very nice right here by Simonson out of the commercial break to carry that light tickler. Thank you, sir. May I have another? He would like at least well, several more strikes. Yeah, good hits like that. Left lane, Simonson. Looking for the break, and the seven pin doesn't get it. That was actually a little bit better than the last shot, and it didn't strike. And better by the entry into the one three pocket. It was a little more solid, not quite as light as the one on the right lane. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, yeah, thank you, Oil. And you hear the oh boy on the single pin spare conversion. You're never quite sure how it's going to work out. He's all good there. He looks in a spare to a seventh frame down by 10 pins. Max scores, you see it. We might have a scintillating finish here in our second match of the night.
Don't want to buck. No, see, it's something, it, something caught him. I heard some kind of noise. Take your time. Something, something happened. Somebody dropped something, and and he heard it. I mean, I heard it all the way here. So, no worries. Just regroup. Go through your process again. Your pre-shot routine, and let her fly. Nightgear throw from down under. That's what you do. Yeah, he's standing tall. He means business, and he's he's not intimidated. Perfection. From our crew. Great location, one three pocket. Left lane to tie it up. It's high, three, six, ten. Now that shot there looked like he kind of grabbed it. Check out some strike track numbers. But it looked like he just got a mitt full right here. Throughout the shark, Sam three for three on this spare. Four for four. Could also be early hook on that left lane, and throughout the five nights we've been covering this World Series, that left lane has hooked a, a little bit more than the right lane. Something to watch for moving forward. Remember, Simonson's last two shots were both kind of light, right? The light mixer on the right lane and then kind of that that little shaker seven in his last frame, frame seven. Seven pin stands. I mean, it's just rude. <laughs> Getting down to the end of this and Max score is going to come back up after this spare. Which he converts. Yeah. Five for five on that seven pin throughout Shark. And all those great stats brought to us by our friends over at Lane Talk. For more information, you want to be a better player, better bowler, and learn more about the game, go to lanetalk.com. Tim Zappel, Jay Gordon are here. Area manager, Bolero Wauwatosa. District manager, Bolero Wauwatosa. Thanks so much. Gentlemen, for all of your support, hospitality, this fantastic facility hosting the World Series for a second straight year, about 10 minutes from downtown Milwaukee. See the max score there, 247, 238. Oh, Big shot, Simon. Oh, ringing 10 pin. Good shot. Yes, it was. But now, because of that 10 pin, he could get shut out. and keeps his cool. Cooley steps up here. Mount Wargle, Australia. Yeah. Big shot, foundation frame for Cooley. Got it. Blitz is the one three pocket. All right, big shot coming up here in the 10th frame for a number of reasons. One, he can get a double and nine and shut out Simonson, but remember the last time on this lane, he went high and left the three, six, 10. There's gotta be an adjustment coming. The question is, will he make the right adjustment and will he execute the shot? We're gonna find out here real quick, right after this re-rack. Re-rack for Cooley. 
See the max numbers. Has to take the lead. Two strikes and nine for the win. One re-rack remaining for each. Looks for the first. Got it. I'll take my second one down, please. So it looks like he moved three left on this shot. Let's take a look at his finish. Yep. I wonder if he'll make another move. That was pretty high flush. Watch this. In danger of leaving almost the four pin could leave a solid nine on a hit like that i think sam's going to move another board left with his feet took his second re-rack strike a nine for the win Things Simonson can do but hope. Yeah, no defense in this sport, just all offense. And Sam Cooley steps up in the tenth, the ninth and tenth frame, now only needing nine to advance yet again here at the Shark Championship. Nine for the win. Got it. Yes. It's a winner. For Sam Cooley. He knocks off Anthony Simonson to climb the ladder to Packy Hanrahan. Well, you got to give credit where credit's due. I mean, he stepped up and packed four in a row. One left on the second ball in the 10th frame, like I assumed he would, and ace the next two shots right behind it. I just moved two and two on the frame. Uh, hmm? we'll chat with his tour reps and talk strategy for the next it's match. Over there. I can. Oh, wait, hang on. I think I bought two bags out. Well, quite a World Series for Simonson. We saw him USA versus the World. Two shows on the patterns. He's the fourth seed currently qualifying after 60 games for the World Championship. We may see him Sunday as well. But next tonight, two-handed lefty Packy Hanrahan looks for his second career title and second of the season against Cooley. Let's flash back to a fantastic finish. The first ever World Series of Bowling, Michael Fagan against Jack Jurek. Messenger, no! We have a tie! Wow! 218 to 218. Does it get any better? It doesn't get better. They went to a roll off, setting up an incredible finish in the first WSOB for Jack Jurek. Gets them all to kick. Pressure to the youngster. Way off target. Jurek can celebrate for the first time in 14 years and 175 days. The Rippers got another title. 2000 PBA Shark Championship. RP, you were there. I mean, what a yeah. moment for Jack Jurek. Pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, Jack's one of the greatest people you'll ever meet. And I was fortunate enough to be able to room with Jack Jurek on the senior tour. And one week we were rooming together and he beat me for a title. But anytime Jack Jerk wins, it's a really good moment. And it's part of the World Series of Bowling, right? Great history is involved in this event. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I can't, love hear, I can't hear you. What? <laughs> yeah, great history. There's always been great history. And again, I think you really have to give it up for Tom Clark and his vision. When he started with this World Series of Bowling way back when, I mean, he envisioned this happening, right? being a, a complete world event. 
and that's what it's turned into. And man, we've had some great memories over the years. And thank you, Tom Clark, for putting it all together. Well, great sport of bowling, like most competitions, of course, has a winner and a loser. Sometimes you get really gracious winners. Sometimes you get really sore losers. Let's find out more. It's a subject of pressing questions tonight with Kimberly Pressler, presented by Go Bowling. Sore losers? Who is the most gracious winner on tour? I don't know. It ain't me. I'll tell you that. I mean, I win. I'm stealing that thing and running out the door. I don't care. I think it's Jacob Buttruff. He's 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 one of the coolest guys out here. He's very humble. Who is the most gracious? Uh, probably Kyle Troop. He's he's just really down to earth. Chris Barnes comes to mind. Uh, early thoughts. Jacob Buttruff. Gracious winner. I'd say Jake Peters. Tom, who would you say is the sorest loser on oh. tour? That's easy. It's EJ Tackett. He's a little bit of a crybaby when he loses. I think all of us are sore losers at times. I'm really debating whether or not it's me or not because I'm, I, I don't like to lose at anything. I'm gonna go Sean Rash as the sorest loser. I think Pete, Pete was a sore loser. And it didn't matter where, it could have, it could be league. And if he lost, he would still be complaining about it. I mean, I try not to pay attention to, to people when they, when they lose, you know, like I don't wanna, I mean, I don't want to stare at anybody while they're bowling, you know, bowling bad and losing and be like, ah, oh, that guy's petty when he loses, isn't he? Temper-wise, I mean, I think we will all agree with Anthony Simonson. <laughs> Might be Anthony Simonson. You know, he's kind of rough with his attitude, but I think that makes you a sore loser then, so. Maybe Simonson. I'd have to go with Anthony. Who would you say is the sorest loser? Uh, me. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good friend of mine, but man, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta get over it, buddy. Well, Simonson loses RP tonight. <laughs> and he that admits it, right? I mean, it's tough sometimes. He's a sore loser because he wants to win so badly. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with his emotions. And, and you know, he, he puts it out there. He's so good and so talented. And he's got such a long career ahead of him. Um, who knows what, what some years and some maturity will do for Anthony Simonson, but I think you still have to have that fire in your belly, and I don't see anything wrong with the way he reacts when he loses. He handled the loss tonight, I thought, to Sam Cooley pretty well. Second straight show for Simonson trying for another title this year. So, registration for the inaugural 2023 PBA LBC National Championships now open to all bowlers of all skill levels from all centers this summer right here in Milwaukee, right here at this center, Malera Walatosa. You can compete in singles as well as optional doubles and team events. Even combine your scores with the pros. Enter today at PBA.com. Lots of entries already. Tremendous event. Please go log on immediately and get involved. It's going to lead to several categories, Randy to shows we'll have in September in Portland, Maine. Yeah, a lot of divisions. I mean, an additional $100,000 up for grabs. Uh, there's TV money that's involved. We're going to call the action in Portland, Maine. I mean, it's a great event. Go to PBA.com and check it out for all the details. Going to be fun. We can't wait for the next match here tonight. Packy fans are here. Cooley, Packy, Hanrahan next. Odds uh, to win provided by Fox Bet for entertainment purposes only. The favorite is Packy Hanrahan. Head to head with Sam Cooley next on FS1. Packed house tonight. Guaranteed rate World Series of Bowling on FS1. Valero Wallatos outside Milwaukee. Dave, long time the Hall of Famer Randy Peterson. Kimberly Presley with you getting set for a tremendous matchup between Packy Hanrahan and Sam Cooley. Second and fifth seeds about to go head to head. Cooley's knocked off to Hava Nainen and Simonson so far. Third match underway. Can Cooley keep it going? Good start. Wow. Yeah, and it looked like another move left out of commercial. Pretty long break waiting for his opponent, Packy Hanrahan. Yeah, remember when he first started, it was 21 board. That was uh, just inside of the fourth arrow. Now it's inside fifth arrow. That was about 26 at the arrows. 
Fifth year pro, one title this year for the 29 year old. Now lives in Wichita, originally from Connecticut. Packy Hammerhand looking for help on the 10 pin, won't get it. Kokomo Classic champ, Kokomo, Indiana for his first title. And that footwork that we typically see with the two-hander is a real short step into the pivot. Tenpin got that, no worries. Two-handed southpaw. He told us pre-show he had a big lead, top seed in Kokomo. Up by 200 pins, but didn't even think about it. Didn't realize it till late. Wasn't scoreboard watching. Felt so natural to be the top seed as we checked the arsenal. What's he throwing, Dave? Just the purple hammer. Buttrick won with last night. Can Packy Hanrahan repeat that feat? Fans are cheering his name here tonight. Truly two for two so far this evening. Keeps it going. Impressive wins over Tahaba Nainen, 247, 212, and Simo, 238, 221. He is locked into the 1-3 pocket. Averaging just over 242 is Sam Cooley for his two games. And a Another nice start with a double early. Inside and through the face. 310 baby split. It's not difficult to white on the bowl. It really isn't. Especially when you have it written down, right? On several pages. God. Sam Cooley on the 310. Conversion this week, one of two. Got it. Spare the game is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. You want to get moving fast with same day mortgage? You can go from application to approval. It's one business day. Time to get your dream home crazy fast. Learn more at rate.com. Well done. Back to the notebook. Got to log it. Packy. Seven pin. Real name Patrick, by the way, but his dad's nickname, his dad's real name is also Patrick, but dad's nickname is Packy. So he's Packy. There's dad. Patrick, a.k.a. Packy, is here. But no one calls Dad Patrick or the bowling Packy Patrick. It's just Packy. Packy couldn't tell us why. It's just a family nickname. Goes way back. I think it's pretty cool myself. Good nickname. Sunday, the NASCAR Cup Series returns to Fox. The series heads to Talladega, where high speeds and pack racing always make you hold your breath. Catch all the action with a free race kicking things off at 2 Eastern, then the engines fire. The Geico 500 at 3 Eastern. You can catch it all on Fox. I want to go fast. I want to go fast. I want to go fast. <laughs> I love that movie so much. Absolute classic. Of course, I could watch Will Ferrell in anything. Not playing for Packy. 6'10. Well, he said it was close, but 
take a look at strike track is definitely inside broke loose down lane and you have to wonder when the ball doesn't hit very solidly like it that third frame where he left that soft seven you kind of subconsciously want to try to give it a little bit more Whoa! What just happened? Whoa and wow! What was that? It's a spare. Yes, it is. <laughs> the six from the back of the pit for the spare, and Packy says, thank you. Don't try that at home. A rarity. That's a big mark. That's a big strike. Yeah, and he's doing what you're supposed to do, just following that transition. And as soon as he sees a little friction, he moves inside a little bit farther, takes his target with it. Playing the left lane to hook just a little bit more than the right lane. And I think this shot on the right side of the lane is going to hold up nicely for at least another game, and that's all we need, right? This is the Beer Frame, sponsored by Pat's Blue Ribbon, right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ask for the original, and please drink responsibly. Hey. All right. Well, this one got back from Sheboygan. Check this out. And I don't think that would have happened in game one or games one or two, but now that they've broken down and there's some friction to the right, this one gets way back. Probably the most demonstrative he's been. He's not an emotional guy, but goes back to the journal. The Scorpion here last year, Packy. There you go. Late trip on the seven pin, down it goes to keep us close. Check out his eyes on the target right here from Packy Hanrahan. I mean, he really stays locked in. Needs another one now to cut the deficit to 10. For the turkey, six frame, big shot, big result for the big guy, Packy Hatterhan. Packs a punch. <laughs> Packy Hanrahan trying to give Cooley something to think about. He trails by only 10 halfway through match number three. The online graphics you see tonight, including the ball tracer, courtesy of Clutch Bowling. Fabulous as always. Great match here. Cooley Hanrahan on doubles, not the turkeys, we said, going to break. So, 10 pins between the two. Sam looks for the turkey here, and chance for a 20 pin lead. They give Randy our entire crew. Fifth show. World Series of Bowling. Cooling. Yep. Checking to see if that was a move because it came in light. And a lot of times that happens out of commercial break for the players. But let's take a look at where Sam started this evening and where he's at now. Take a look at these numbers right here. So good seven boards at the laydown and 
six boards at the target. Back to Sam left lane. Really good shot with the nine pin. Stands. And back to even. There you go, about 19, just right of 20 on the right lane. And here's game two. 24 and a half. 25. That ball's cooking down lane for the nine pin, single pin spare conversion. Packy steps up. Down 19, works on the double though. A chance for a lead. Third and 2020 at the Cheetah. Lost to fellow Wichita State alum Sean Rash. Big one for Packy. No. Not what he was hoping for at all. 3 5 6 lead. It's running out of time for Packy. Needs to get something started. Covers that nicely, but you know, Sam Cooley's dialed in and, and Packy's not. You know, throwing that urethane ball is what got him here, but so far only three strikes through seven frames. Last year in this building, five top 15 showings for Packy, third at the Scorpion Championship. Was the number two seed lost to Belmo, 242-186. Does not want to fall to another Australian tonight. Needs it here in the eighth. Yeah, six pin. Good shot again. And the hole deepens. Yeah, and again, no, no uh, traffic, no turbulence on the left side of the lane, just Packy. And again, urethane versus reactive resin. The players, four out of the five two-handed styles and then Cooley uses his thumb and he's running over everyone on one hander tonight looking good his eighth frame works on a spare up 23 pins all the journaling is paying off here One more step to put this away. Sometimes you catch a break. All down. Then the ensuing stare down. The Sam Smirk. Does that work for you? The only reaction you get from Cooley. Top seed, Matt Ogle awaits the winner, looking more and more like this guy. Foundation frame to go up by 33. Delivers. Too much Cooley. And I'm afraid that Packy Hanrahan's not going to be able to overcome this match with only two frames left. Max scores, as you can see, 224 for Packy, 257 for Cooley. Cooley already in the 230s. 
All he needs is any kind of mark impact he strikes out. And now it's pretty much over. That kind of match for Packy. Seven pin. You heard Packy say that rack stinks. And pretty much uh, the result of that seven pin because of it. for Packy. Too little too late it appears. Well another really good week for Packy to go with a very nice season that he's having. Remember he captured his first title just a bit ago, the Kokomo Classic in Kokomo, Indiana. Here's one for you, Dave. Do you know who the Kokomo Kid was? Who was the Kokomo Kid? The late, great Don Johnson. The Kokomo Kid. Legend. Yes, putting it mildly. One of the greatest ever. One of the greatest coaches ever. And who can forget the infamous 299 at the Tournament of Champions, right? But another good week for Packy. But it is going to be Sam Cooley moving on and taking on Matt Ogle for the title here at the Shark Championship. You just gotta keep it on the lane if you're Sam Cooley here. Which he does. It's official. It's a win for Cooley. He knocked off to Hobbenheimen. He knocked off Simonson. Continues to climb the ladder with a win over Packy Hanrahan. Matt Ogle awaits the top seed. Can he take down another two handed power bowler? We'll find out. Wobbles Matt Ogle. Awaits. Nice. Well, Sam told us in the pre-match interview tonight, appearing for the world team, the 12-2 drumming of Team USA here at the World Series of Bowling really helped him get back in the mode, back in the mood for TV. Confidence. This one's already over. That he would perform well here tonight. And man, as he delivered. Top seed, Ogle, head to head with a five seed, Cooley. A championship on the line from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Packed house tonight. Valero, Wauwatosa outside Milwaukee. Ready for championship match time. Top seed medal has fans in the house tonight. They'll go head to head with Australia's Sam Cooley, the five seed who Randy has climbed the ladder in impressive fashion. He has made the right moves. He's journaled the whole thing. He's one match shy of going all the way from the five spot to a title. Yeah, it's dangerous when you got a guy that's climbing the ladder like that. He's locked in. He's got his nerves in check. He knows what the lanes are doing. Now, the question is, how much will the 10 shots of practice affect Sam Cooley that Matt Ogle just threw getting ready for this matchup? Oh, it's to win. You see it. Back to Kimberly. 
Matt, so you already have a doubles title. You are one win away getting your first ever singles title. How do you stop the freight train that is Sam Cooley? I just got to go out and bowl my game, you know, bowl the best 12 shots I can. If I beat the pins, I'm going to beat him. So we'll see what happens. You told us in the pre-show interviews that you were not going to bowl timid tonight. What did you mean by that? Yeah, I'm going to get after it. Um, at the TOC, I was a little slow, a little lazy. Uh, I'm going to get after it tonight. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, KP, thanks so much. Matt is ready, Randy. Yeah, and I think this is a great oil pattern for him to do that on, albeit he, he does have to pay close attention to his ball speed. You can't get overly aggressive speed-wise, but he can sure knock the holes out of it at release. Come up next, it's the championship match. Ogle, Cooley, head-to-head -head on FS1. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling. For friends and family fun, log on to GoBowling.com to find a center near you. By Guaranteed Rate. Want to move fast? With Same Day Mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as fast as one day to get you closing on the home of your dreams in just 10 days. Learn more at Rate.com. And by Bolero, the number one place to bowl, party, and play with over 325 locations nationwide. Head to Bolero.com today to find a center near you. Time to crown a champion. Who's going to take home the Shark Trophy tonight? Show number five from this year's World Series of Bowling. Ten minutes from downtown Milwaukee. Cooley has been outstanding so far. Wins over Tahaba Nainen, Simonson, Hanrahan. First three games. First three games right here. Let's see where this one goes. Locked. Just a seven. Remember, first game he was around 19. The third game is at 25. This one's a little bit deeper with some loft. Oh, Boyd's disaster, the dreaded. 7-10 split. That was fast. Punishes the seven pin. Matt Ogle from Louisville, Kentucky. How do you say it? Louisville. That a boy. 38 years old title with his best friend Sean Rash looking for a singles title tonight as the top seed bring it 10 pair all right 10 pin for Matt Matt going through a lot coming into this week right his son Gavin you got to give him a shout out. I mean, Gavin took one right below the knee. You got the story, Dave. You sure do. Ten pin there fell out of a tree. And Matt was here at the World Series of Bowling getting ready to make this show. Heard from his wife back home. So glad after Stacy called in that eventually they learned Gavin's going to be okay. Had a little surgical procedure he's watching tonight he's doing great he's back at school thankfully he's just fine scary moment though certainly for Matt Ogle got to be a helpless feeling when your son is going through serious medical issue and you're not there well I mean you would know you're a father as well I mean that, that's awful I mean and you always expect the worst and you know Matt was like Oh my goodness, he's going to get an infection and they're going to have to do surgery. And as it turned out, it, you know, it wasn't as serious as it could have been. And I got it. Gavin's doing great. Of course, he, he's showing off his, his, uh, his new scar and wound, everyone. So he's kind of the BMOC right now. Good for you, Gavin. 
And I'm so glad that everything turned out for the best and he's doing well. And your pops is here trying to win one for you, Gavin. Well, Matt got pretty emotional talking about it. All good now. He's in a battle with Sam Cooley to his second frame, works on a spare. Right lane comes in high. Two, excuse me, three, four split. Sam hasn't had an open frame the entire night, unless you want to count the fill shot where he was, he was throwing a test ball and testing the waters for some kind of new reaction. But basically all he wants to do is try to get the ball far enough to the right of the three pin and cut it into the four. Tough conversion, no. Four stands, open frame, game changer early. for Ogle on the bench. We'll head to his third frame working on a spare. Now by 12 pins. Let's see how Sam responds. Hates it. No. Three, six, nine. <clears throat> Look how slow that ball speed was, 16.2. About a mile an hour slower than what he's been previously, and that's going to make it hook every time. And I think that's probably because he's moved farther left, and he's trying to get a little bit softer to make sure it comes around the corner. All right. Lots of cover here. No. Back to back. Wow. Shocking collapse here. Back to back frames for Cooley. Leaves the six pin, open frame. And Ogle on the bench has just got to be licking his chops here. Watching Cooley struggle with Sean Rash, his one title. Matt tries to take advantage and does. Matt going with a defender hybrid, Dave, on both lanes so far. And he does have a pair of shoes that actually have rubber on both the right and left soles because he does not want to slide. Look at that. He plants, and then there's no slide going into the foul line. Does a couple of things. It helps him create power, but it also gets him in front of the bowling ball before release. Shoe gets to the foul line first, then the ball. Full gear for Matt on tours. We talked about top of the broadcast. Owns Ogle Lawn and Landscape in Louisville. The strike percentage numbers. New stats. Our friends at Lane Talk for this event. Nobody higher than this man right here. Wants another one here to go up by 33. Yeah. Big strike in the four. 33 pin lead for Ogle. Only missed one event this year, the Springfield Classic. That's been it. He's been full-time. Well, that's what you do when you want to be a champion, and your opponent gives you a couple of openings. it on the ropes early in the championship match which we'll have for you uninterrupted to its conclusion here tonight well look at the ball speed up at the top right 17.4 remember that previously there was a shot at 16.2 in the third frame and so that's the difference more ball speed keeping the ball on line a little bit longer it gets the ball to the pocket Big loft. Left lane loft. Look at the oh! oh, the messenger across the deck for the 10 pin. 
Back to 23 pins. Here's the loft. There's the rotation. Throws it right. And then the very friendly messenger coming across, taking the 10 out, and then he turns back and gives it the Mutombo. No, no, no. Ogle tries to go up 33. We'll do it. Yes, sir. Keeps the foot on the gas, as Kimberly talked about with Matt. Pre-match interview. I'm not going to be timid tonight. Going to be aggressive. Big message in our pre-match interview with Matt Ogle. Looks for the four-bagger. Six frame. Lost the packy. Was dispatched moments ago by Cooley. His best finish so far. Wants a 43-pin lead. No help on the 10th this time. Mm. Yeah, he's checking his numbers over to his right on strike track. Pretty good at the break point. Pretty good half an inch at the arrows for Matt Ogle. Cover the spare, maintain 32-pin lead right here. Stay the course. He didn't like it, that's why it's a miss. And a whiff on the 10 pin in an open frame. Damaging for Ogle's chances tonight. Just like that, Cooley's right back in it. John, can I get a right back, please? Right back, please. Well, Shocker. Let's see if he can survive that. And we've seen so many matches where missed single pin spares come back to haunt players. I mean, hey, on Monday night, we saw three gutter balls and two fouls. A.J. Johnson still won the game against Jacob Buttriff with three gutter balls. So, I mean, anything's possible, right? But obviously, missing single pin spares is not a healthy way to, to go about your business. Off the rear rack, Cooley tries to take advantage. Not get help on the four pin. Somehow it stands. <clears throat> Another couple boards left for Sam Cooley. He's definitely made a move on the left lane, and he's run into a lot of friction in this final game against Matt Ogle. Perfect so far. On the four pin, got that, has a mark. But missed a golden opportunity to tie the match to his seventh frame. Sam has overcome two opens in this match, second and third frames. Sam Cooley, two to three boards left on this left lane. And locked. Big shot, seven frame. <laughs> Takes care of business. We keep things very interesting here. And now how does Matt Ogle respond? Season. Looking for a great shot. Double wood instead to eight. A little fast for the speed on that shot there for Matt. And two eight looking at him. Here in the seventh frame of the title match of the Shark Championship. Matt Ogle has never won a singles event before. Only his second career singles match on TV. Good Does cover. cover nicely. Yeah, good cover. He got real soft with the speed, and the location was perfect and allowed the big hand to cover that two and the eight. You 
called it. TOC, Fairlawn, Ohio, family is here watching tonight. His wife and his dad. Stacy's here, dad Doug. Look, I, I, I'm, I don't really know Stacy, but she looked really nervous. And can you blame her? No. Another Lap rack. 10. Yeah, another rack comment. This time from a right hander and Matt Ogle. Remember last game, Packy didn't like the right lane and that rack. Both players still have one re rack remaining. Can't miss this one. All good. You know, we talked about it at the top of the show, right? 48 feet in length, this oil pattern and the two-handed success because that power helps get those corners out. Well, if you're not getting the corner out or the corners out with two hands, I mean, it's, it's not a good sign, right? You got to get those corners out. So far tonight, this man's been able to do that. Finish here, Bruin. In Wauwatosa. Yeah, we could draw even now with one more strike in the ninth frame. And even better, he sets up the tenth. So, max score for Sam Cooley, 225. Max score for Matt Ogle, 225. Foundation frame for the tie. Oh, it's high. I didn't like it. And left a lot. Three, six, nine, ten. Stan. Big, big miss right there for Sam. And, and left himself one of the toughest leaves that's not a split or a washout. The three, six, nine, ten. Reason being is you got to cover that back pin, that nine pin. Huge conversion for Cooley. Gets it! Yeah, that's pretty good. Clutch for Sam. Back and forth, topsy-turvy. Championship match here tonight. Foundation frame, Ogle up 14, works on a spare. This is a big shot. Wants it right lane. Gets it. Looks like if he feels 19, he's going to win his first singles title. Spare and seven, he shuts out Cooley. Nineteen, I'm at seventeen. Come on, boy. Tries to get closer. Good shot. Got to cover. Pin. He's got to cover it. Remember, he missed a 10 pin in the sixth frame. Throughout this shark event for Ogle, was the 10 pin, was 12 of 13 heading into the show tonight. But his 
Randy talked about big miss in the sixth. Regroups, gets it. Need seven. Keep it together, Matt. Still one more very important shot. Satisfies like a Snickers. First career singles title for Matt Ogle comes at the World Series of Bowling. Well done, Matt. Well done. <laughs> oh my God. And now the emotions. Are gonna really flow for Matt Ogle, who's dealt with so much. It's not everywhere. Son Gavin, the injury we told you about, but he's doing great. Back home in Louisville, celebrating with his family. And there'll be a lot of celebrating here in Wauwatosa. Go get that trophy. Trophy time, Matt. Go get it. Yeah. Yeah. Long time for this. Here's the winner, Randy. Well, I needed seven, he got it in, and thank thankfully it crosses amazing. over to get nine and he weathered the storm, he weathered that missed ten pin oh, in the man. six and Matt Ogle wins for the first time on the PBA Tour in a singles event. To Kimberly. A very emotional Matt Ogle. You earned this tonight. You started out strong, and then that sixth frame happened. You had an open, and you struggled a little bit. How'd you turn it back around to walk away the winner? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a great support team. Uh, my reps, teammates, fans, all you guys are awesome. I just tried to make the best shots I could and, and you know, keep it in the one-three pocket. When we talked earlier, you described your season so far as surreal. Now that you are a PBA titleist with a singles championship right here, how would you describe it? Speechless, <laughs> priceless. I don't know. I can't put words to it. It's amazing. And is there anyone you want to dedicate this win to? Maybe an adorable 10-year-old boy who was at home and couldn't be here, who you absolutely gushed about today? Yeah, I love you, Gavin, Linda. All my fans back home, friends. I love you guys. Thanks. Congratulations on your win. Matt Ogle, victorious for the first time in a singles event on the PBA Tour. He paid his dues, learned how to cast, learned how to make match play, learned how to make television, and then he learned how to win. His second career title comes tonight. Coverage of the Guaranteed Rate World Series of Bowling here from Bolero Wauwatosa. Wraps up this coming Sunday on Fox Noon Eastern with our fourth major of the season, the PBA World Championship, presented by Paps Blue Ribbon. For Randy Peterson, the Hall of Fame, Kimberly Presley, the entire crew. Dave Ryan saying so long until Sunday at Noon Eastern. You've been watching the PBA on FS1. One a moment for Matt Ogle, the top-seeded two-hander from Louisville, Kentucky. Wins his first career singles title tonight. He takes the shark.